Hello guys, welcome back. So let's start with a new topic that is radius and ulna. In previous video, we have done the humerus, right? So as I said, there are a lot of things in the humerus that will join with the radius and ulna. Okay, so let's know what structures are present in the radius and ulna, then we'll know how they join with the humerus. Okay, so starting first with the radius bone. So radius is present towards your thumb side. Okay, ulna is present towards your little finger. That you should draw. That radius is present to towards the thumb side and ulna is present towards the little finger. Remember this. At any cost. Okay, so first starting with the radius bone. So what does radius have? You can see this structure, right? This is the head of the radius. Okay, R head of the radius is towards the humeral side. It's proximal. Okay, whereas head of the ulna is towards your wrist side, or we can call it it is at the distal to the trunk. Okay, so this is the head. You can see this constriction, right? This constriction will be what every constriction is neck. Okay, then you can see this pointed thing which is meeting with the ulna. This is called as radial tuberosity. What it is called as radial tuberosity. Now, you should remember that biceps brachii, biceps brachii is the muscle which is present in your arm. And what we are studying right now, we are studying the forearm, okay? People make biceps, right? By doing weight liftings and stuff. So, where are biceps present? In the arm. So, now that biceps brachii attaches to this radial tuberosity. Biceps brachii attaches over here. You have to remember that, okay? And now, let's see the further things, okay? You can see, this is the shaft of the radius. This is shaft of the radius okay then this conical shape thing which you can see coming out okay this is called a styloid process ulna and radius both have this okay styloid process of radius if both have so we should specify right about whom we are talking so it's styloid process of radius and right here this concave shape you see this is called as the ulnar notch okay ulnar notch why it was given the term because it will situate or it will attach with the head of the ulna okay so in the radius bone we have the, we have the ulnar notch okay then we have this. Let's look at the ulna now. So for the ulna, the first, this thing which you see, okay, the C-shaped boundary, that is the olecranon process. What it is, olecranon process. Actually, this is the olecranon process, okay. From the front side, if you see, you will be only able to see some kind of protrusion. But olecranon process is actually major part is in the posterior side of the ulna, okay, at your back side. It will form your wrist joint, uh, sorry, your elbow joint. It will help in movement of your elbow, okay. Then this depressed kind of thing which you see, this is what this is the trochlear notch what it is trochlear notch as we have learned in humerus already we have seen this olecranon word we have seen this trochlear word so this is how the humerus the fossas in the humerus will attach to the bones of the ulna okay for forming the elbow joint okay then this thing which you see this leaf like thing it is called as coronoid process okay remember this word coronoid okay then we have here over Head of the ulna. What it is? It is the head of ulna. Head of ulna is towards your wrist joint. You have to remember. And this conical shape thing, it is mostly visible from the posterior side, not from the interior side. But I've drawn it over here. A small protrusion or small, this pointed. This is the styloid process of ulna. So this is styloid process of ulna. You have to remember. Okay. This much you have to remember about the ulna and radius. Now, there are structures present in these things also. So you should remember this olecranon process, what will attach? In the olecranon, triceps break. You know what are triceps? They are present on the posterior side of the arm. Okay. Triceps break. Biceps are present on the anterior side. When we will be doing the muscles, I guess, second after this video, it could be there. Okay. Triceps break attaches to its superior surface, to the superior surface of the olecranon process. Okay. You have to remember this part. Now, there are a few things that you should remember about it. But before that, let me tell you about the joints which are present over here. Okay. So let's do the joints. First, I forgot to mention something. In between radius and ulna, you have a membrane which connects both. This membrane is called as interosseous membrane. Now, it was given the term interosseous. As I have said before also, osseous means what? It means bone. Inter means in between. So in between membrane is called as interosseous membrane. Okay. Remember that also. Now, let's do this joints part. So joints present in radius and ulna. First, this interosseous membrane joint, it is called as middle radio ulnar joint. Okay, this interosseous membrane is joining two bones, right? That the joint is known as middle radio ulnar joint. Now, the type of joint, it is syndesmosis. What it is? It is syndesmosis. That is, that main category is immovable joint. Or immovable joint are also called as fibrous joints. Okay. Then, we should remember superior and inferior radio ulnar joint it is a pivot joint 
ओके दे माइट आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन दैट विच बोन मूव्स डज अल्ला पाइवर्ड्स ओवर रेडियस और रेडियस पाइवर्ड्स पाइवर्ट मींस रोटेट ओके ट्राई रोटेटिंग योर हैंड फ्रॉम द पाम साइड टू द बैक साइड व्हाट इज रोटेटिंग योर थंब साइड इज रोटेटिंग आर यू एबल टू रोटेट फ्रॉम योर अल्ला साइड टेल मी यू आर नॉट एबल टू रोटेट राइट फ्रॉम योर लिटिल फिंगर साइड सो व्हाट इज इट हियर रेड व्हाट विल बी द आंसर रेडियस पाइवर्ड्स ओवर अल्ला रिमेंबर दिस ओके व्हिच विल मूव रेडियस विल रोटेट ओके देन जॉइंट्स आर डन आई गेस Now, guys, there are something called as annular ligament and articular ligament. Let's know the difference between two. So, what is annular ligament? So, write down this thing: annular ligament. It is a place where head of radius will attach to radial notch of ulna. What does it mean? I'll explain you in few seconds. Now, then, articular ligament. Now, what is articular ligament? Articular ligament is head of ulna. attaches to ulnar notch of radius now how to remember this if you forget first let's know about that so whosoever head if it's head of radius then the notch will be of the radius the bone will be different but okay now head of ulna so notch will be which notch of radius okay notch will be ulnar notch of which bone of radius bone opposite bone but the head and the notch will be same okay now what does that mean let's look in the previous slide Now, what was annular ligament? It was place where head of radius is meeting with the annular, uh, sorry, radial notch of ulnar bone. So here, the head of radius meeting with the radial notch of ulnar bone. Now, head of ulna meeting with, you can see over here. Head of ulna is meeting whom? Head of ulna is meeting the ulnar notch of which bone? Ulnar notch is present in which bone? It is present in radius. Okay, so I hope you understood this annular and articular ligament. So now let's look at this olecro. Uh, how our elbow joint works. So here is our elbow joint. You can see, right? You have this humerus. You have this ulna. Okay. In the ulna, as I've mentioned before, this is the olecranon process. You can see. This is for size the trochlear notch of ulna. Now here, somewhere on the posterior side of the humerus, you will have the olecranon process as well as capitulum and trochlea. Capitulum for uh, was for head of the radius to join. Trochlear was for was for trochlear notch of the ulna. And olecranon force of the humerus was for olecranon process of the ulna. So how does that actually work? You can look, right? So this is 90 degree elbow. What is happening in 90 degree? This becomes the chair. This trochlear notch becomes the chair for the humerus to sit. Okay, humerus will sit. Now, what happens in flexion? Flexion, you can see this olecranon process will come. It's like a piece of puzzle. One is a puzzle. The uh, other will sit. The part of the puzzle will then mix with the other part to together form a bond. So this is how you can look in this picture, right? So for this ball-like structure, we have this concave shape structure. Okay, that is your flexed elbow. In your extended elbow, this is how this olecranon process will enter into the olecranon process. Okay. So and you have to remember this elbow joint. This elbow joint is a hinge joint. What it is? Hinge joint. Now what do you mean by hinge joint? Hinge joints are those joints which move in only one direction, which move in only one direction. Okay, you have to remember. So elbow joint, your knee joint also moves in one direction. Your ankle joint also moves in one direction. So these three joints are your hinge joint. Okay. So I hope this moving movement of the elbow joint is now clear to you all. Okay. So now coming to olecranon bursitis, as you can see, this is the olecranon process of the ulnar bone. Okay, so many students sit with their elbow, putting their support completely on the elbow. They sit on the bed and when they are writing or doing something, they lay on the bed in such a way that they put their hands on their in their palms and they sit with completely putting their upper body weight on the elbow. Okay, so this causes an inflammation over here. This inflammation of the olecranon process it is called as olecranon bursitis. Okay. So olecranon bursitis is it is also known as student's elbow. Why is it student's elbow? Because in the school times also, people when sit on the uh, benches, they put their hand, uh, they put their face into their palms and sit. Okay, so they put basically they are putting their weight on their elbow. This will cause them olecranon bursitis. So student's elbow, or it is also known as minor's elbow. Okay, now what it is? It is inflammation of olecranon process. It is inflammation of the olecranon process. So that's it about this. radius and ulna okay i hope everything is clear now i forgot to explain you this into the picture form we have done it there let's look over here so this is what you saw was the olecranon process okay then you saw this inside fossa like thing it was trochlear process then this was that was trochlear notch sorry and this is coronoid process then you have the shaft of ulna coming down you have this head of the ulna okay then for the radius you have this head of the radius above neck of the radius radial tuberosity then this is shaft of the radius Then we have the styloid process. You can see over here, right? This is coming out in a triangular form. This is uh, styloid process of the radius. Similarly, in the ulna, you can see the small protruding thing. Okay, so that is styloid process of the ulna. This is styloid process of the radius. And then you will have your like concave thing that will be called as what will it be called? It will be called as ulnar notch of radius. Fine. I hope everything is clear now. Thank you.